Welcome, today we are going to talk about continuous time small signal modeling under digital control. So, in this lecture we want to recapitulate our continuous time small signal modeling for analog control. Then we want to go for like modeling of sample data system for digitally controlled converter and then continuous time small signal modeling of, of switch mode power converter under digital control. So, we will start with our you know AC equivalent circuit of a practical synchronous buck converter which we have discussed in our earlier course uh, NPTEL course and in this circuit we start with our actual uh, synchronous buck converter and this is the AC equivalent circuit. And here the R equivalent we know that this R equivalent is nothing but RDS on that is R of this on state resistance which is here plus RL the resistance of the inductor DC resistance. So, this uh, circuit shows also a current sink and that will be helpful to actually characterize the output impedance and input impedance. So, you will know about we all know about this equivalent circuit. Now, if we want to find output impedance expression then under open loop condition we want to keep the duty ratio constant. So, the perturbation of the duty ratio is set to 0. We also want to keep input voltage constant. So, the input voltage perturbation is 0 and then the earlier AC equivalent circuit will be transformed into this circuit where as if this is you are looking at from this point and this is my output impedance where we have a current sinking load which is I0 and because it is a sinking load. So, output impedance expression will be parallel combination of this branch and this branch as well as the resistance ok. And output voltage perturb model that is the V0 tilde you can say or V0 hat tilde is equal to minus Z0 into I0 tilde where since it is a sinking load that is why this will be negative sign will come. And this is discussed in lecture number 33 in our earlier course. Now, we can also find out control to output transfer function and that is under open loop system. So, where we will set the input voltage perturbation to 0 as well as we will set load perturbation external load perturbation to 0. So, that means that is remove and then we can get control to output transfer function using this expression and we can find out all the Q factor under natural frequency and that is also discussed in lecture number 33. Now, the complete small signal model we know that the perturbation in the output voltage can be expressed in terms of the perturbation of the duty ratio, the perturbation of the output current and the perturbation of the supply voltage. Output current perturbation and the supply voltage perturbation are the external which generally considered to be a disturbance load and duty ratio perturbation is a control variable in order to regulate the output voltage for change in load current or change in input voltage or if you want to maintain certain achieve certain transient performance. So, that GVG is known as audio susceptibility which shows what is the effect in the output voltage for change in input voltage and control to output transfer function is the one because since it is a control input. So, any how do you uh, you know anticipate the effect of disturbance in the output voltage by adjusting this duty ratio and another is the output impedance. Now, we know that GVD is the control to output transfer function and GVG is the audio susceptibility and this is the output impedance expression and for all this expression the denominator term is common and that represents the poles of the system. And this is also discussed in lecture number 33 in our earlier course. Now, what is our objective? First, we want to go for digital control. So, in this modeling of the digital control, we will start with from the continuous time model and we want to start adding digitization from our continuous time block under analog control. So, the first block that will come under modulator gain and if we talk about 
direct due to ratio control direct due to ratio control and such control one of such control is the voltage mode control. So, voltage mode control is an example of direct due to ratio control where we are controlling the due to ratio directly by means of feedback loop. Okay. So, if we go by this then you know our control voltage typically this is the output of the voltage controller that is a control voltage and that is coming from the outer loop and this is compared with the short wave form. So, this is our short wave form. If you compare with the short wave form wherever they intersect that represent the D to ratio because it is D analog into T s. So, T s is the total time period which is also the switching period and D analog as if we are talking about analog control. So, the due to ratio using analog control is represented by D into T that is the on type. And we know about this and V m is the maximum voltage for this uh, short tooth waveform. And we know under voltage mode control V con by V m can be written as D analog and in that way D analog can be written as V control. So, V control we like small because it is an instantaneous variable where V m is the constant variable that is the peak amp, uh, that maximum value of the short tooth signal. So, why you are talking about this because if you take a voltage mode control we will have a error voltage then this error voltage we pass through a controller and this controller output we call it as a V con and that will be compared with this short tooth waveform. This is our short tooth waveform and then this controller output will go to a latch circuit. So, there will be a latch circuit and this will generate the our gate signal. Now, the gate signal in the gate signal we will be controlling this on time and typically it is D into T. So, here the due to ratio is due to the analog control is D analog. So, we are controlling the due to ratio or we are adjusting the due to ratio by means of this control voltage. So, if we want to get the small signal model we know up to this portion we know it is the linear blocks all blocks are linear linear blocks, but this portion is a non-linear. So, this portion is a non-linear uh, you know these are the non-linear element and we want to relate the due to ratio of this Q in terms of the control voltage by means of linear uh, by transfer function. So, we need to get the modulator gain. So, we are trying to get the transfer function of this G P W M that means can we write a linear can we get a linear representation of this block which will ultimately generate the due to ratio. And it turns out this is well known that this G P W m is nothing but the 1 by V m and that we also denote as the modular gain F m and this is a well known and that we have discussed earlier. Now, now we are going for digital control. So, if you go for digital control typically in analog control you know we allow this red signal which is a control voltage to swing because this will be changing with respect to the uh, you know output voltage which is a time time varying signal. And since there is no sampling it is an analog signal. So, if output voltage changes because it has a ripple parameter. So, similarly your con control voltage will also change it will also capture some aspect of ripple and then that will be scaled by the compensator. But in case of digital control when we talk about uniform sampling that means we are talking about one sample per cycle and if we do not consider any analog to digital converter delay any IDC or nothing if we do not consider any other delay then as if we are capturing sample here and output voltage and that output voltage that means we are talking about this is our output voltage it passed through an ADC and this is our sample voltage and this sample voltage is subtracted from the reference voltage and this error voltage is passed through our controller and this is now our V con and equal in terms of n this is a digital. So, since output voltage can change we are only considering once per cycle and that is since there is no delay 
So, we are not considering any delay. So, this is the age of this clock when the switching will happen, will start. It is the age of the switching clock and under trailing edge modulation, the short wave waveform start rising at the age of the switching clock. Now, at the same clock, we are getting the sample. That means, the samples are getting updated. That means, if we draw the output voltage waveform. So, then if we draw this kind of waveform, then what we are getting? This is the sample, this is the sample. So, these are the clock edge like this. So, we are getting the sample at these edges. So, once these samples are captured, it passes through a controller which is a discrete time controller and that will be algebraic expression and this controller will be updated if there is no delay in the controller, we are not considering initially any delay. So, this will also get updated as if it will get updated here, it will remain constant, then again it will get updated here, then again it will remain constant like this. So, we are not considering any delay, so it will get updated at this value. So, that means this controller will get fixed at the beginning and it will remain constant for the whole cycle. And for such digital control, the yellow one indicate the intersection of the, so that is why you are calling the duty ratio under, this is the duty ratio under digital control, which is from here to here. But if we take at the same time, if we take the continuous time control, analog control, then actual signal of the controller output, which is there is no sampling. So, it will intersect the ramp here. So, that means this is my on time for the analog control and the corresponding duty is D analog and this is the on time for the digital control and this is the digital duty ratio under digital control. So, you can see there is a difference between the duty ratio due to analog and the digital process and naturally this is due to the sampling and since we are sampling once per cycle the uniform sampling. So, it is obvious that we are getting some difference in the duty ratio. Now, we want to get the modulator gain for this digital block. So, we want to see how can we can we get the modulator gain for the digital PWM block under this sampling, uniform sampling, which will take somewhat similar to that of analog, but maybe something different, but can we get a linear approximation or the linear version of the transfer function or not. So, to answer this question, the first thing, this is again the previous scenario where we have the sample control voltage and we have the actual control voltage, this is the actual control voltage and the green one is the sample control voltage and that two different uh, waveform actually is results in two different duty ratio. So, our first job can we match the duty ratio of the digital control equivalent to that duty ratio of the analog control, can we match, can you try to do that. So, in order to do that if we look carefully, so this is the analog control, so this is the short tooth waveform under analog control analog control and since it is the analog control corresponding to analog control under analog control this is number 1 and it is the control voltage. So, we are talking about the control voltage. So, it is the I would say it is the control voltage under analog control. So, I would say it is the control voltage. using analog control. So, this is case 1. So, it is resulting the duty ratio D analog and that means if you see carefully this is the point of intersection and if we extend a line here. So, if we can start with this green line then as if this line will intersect with the short wave waveform at the exactly at the same point. So, we want to match this on time which is the on time due to the analog control in such a way if we extend this point. So, this should be the sampling point if we could start the same like a sample value of the control voltage with this value initial value then we can perfectly match. So, that means now what we can do this blue waveform can be time shifted right side delayed, but what amount as if this point of intersection will be as I said the initial value of the control voltage and that is a sample voltage and we want to hold this value. 
So if we as if if we take the sample here and if we start the digital control short wave form then this will intersect here and this on time that means this on time will be exactly identical to the on time of this because their values are same. The green waveform which is the extension of the point of intersection due to the analog control and we are using the same value of the control voltage as a sample value to starting point and then we can achieve exactly. So, which means we can make digital due to ratio and the analog due to ratio identical by time shifting by time shifting by time shifting the short wave waveform. Which means we have to consider a delay and what is the delay? It will be d analog into t because we have not called due to ratio is the just a, a dimension less quantity. So, we have to d analog t. So, that means this will be delayed amount. So, this will be my delay and that will be d analog times t s. So, if we can delay this short wave form by this amount and if this becomes your sample quantity of the control voltage then you will get exactly the same due to ratio as analog control. So, in summary if you want to get the modulator gain this is the analog controller modulator gain 1 by V m. So, if you want to get the equivalent modulator gain of the digital block then it looks like you have to incorporate a delay amount of this and that delay amount is d into T s and so that the digital modulator transfer function will be it is the same as analog modulator transfer function multiplied by the delay. So, it will introduce a time delay time delay in this case equal to the on time. So, this is under trailing edge modulation trailing edge modulation with interval with without you know ADC delay. That means, uh, that means the modulator itself the digital modulation. So, what is the summary? That means, digital pulse width modulator digital PWM block introduce a delay a delay which is equal to d into t and t is the time period. So, in this case we have taken t s is the time period and d is the duration that is the capital duration. So, uh, so modulator delay that means it is written already here. So, it will be like this ok. So, modulator delay. Now, small signal block diagram. So, we can write the small signal block diagram like this. This is the PWM transfer function for the analog control that is 1 by V m. This is the delay. Now, here the delay can be grouped into two. One delay we saw the DPWM delay another delay we have to consider due to the ADC sampling delay. So, the total delay here turns out to be tau ADC plus you know D into T which is your DPWM delay. And this is again under trailing edge PWM with, with 0 uh, trailing edge PWM under trailing edge PWM ok. So, now if we want to model the zero order whole block, so because there will be if you take the because sampling process will also have a zero order hold effect here and this is a digital controller. So, for zero order whole block we can get the transfer function of the zero order whole block from this unit step response and as well as the delay. So, this is a one unit step response here and minus of delay that means you once you apply one unit step here and you apply another unit step here and then you subtract. So, that you will get this particular block and that is here and then if you take the Laplace transform. So, this will be that means 
if you z zero order whole transfer function will be 1 minus e to the power minus s t by s and it turns out it can be shown the zero order hold primarily affect the delay ok. So, we can approximate continuous time small signal model under digital control can be approximated as if you want to get if we ignore the delay I mean we are talking about the analog controller the I mean the equivalent analog controller then PWM modulator transfer function this is the total delay loop delay then this is the control to output transfer function and this is the feedback gain and what is the total loop delay. So, that digital controller loop transfer function will be same as analog controller loop transfer function multiplied by the delay and the delay will be ADC delay plus DPWM delay and under trailing edge modulation T DPWM is nothing but D into T and this approximate results will work reasonably fine and will show when you will compare continuous time and a transfer function using this approximate continuous time model and transfer function using exact or accurate discrete time model that you want to compare they will work reasonably fine and this preliminary uh, model you know also described in detail in this book. Now the control to output transfer function with delay. So we know about the control to output transfer function of a buck converter synchronous buck and if we consider the total loop delay then the control, control to output transfer function will have multi the this one which is coming from here multiplied by the delay and we also know the what is the delay amount that means we know tau d equal to tau adc plus d into t under trailing edge pwm ok. Now in this approach we want we converted the all models because you know if you go to the previous block you will find this block is basically mixed domain it is a mixed domain which what is the meaning of mixed domain. So, it is mixed domain that means this part from here to here these are continuous time path and here to here is the discrete time part. So, this is the discrete time and this is a continuous time. So, we cannot design any controller or we cannot analyze in this mixed domain either we have to convert all this discrete equivalent into continuous domain and that we have approximated ok we have replaced with a delay and then we continue with the all controller transfer function everything and in the delay we, we have considered this all the delays possible delay. The other approach we want to convert this continuous time model into discrete time model by using zero order hold equivalent because there is an inherent zero order hold action because it is one sample per cycle. So, you can approximate uh, you can consider that there is a zero order hold effect and that is why if you go for alternative approach that means you go for zero order hold equivalent how to get that and this is standard textbook you can get the detail if you have a loop transfer function consisting of one continuous time block another zero order hold block then you can get the equivalent that means if the loop has a zero order hold element and there is other part of the loop are we are talking about if it is a part of a loop where we will club together all continuous time transfer function and you know as if the left side there is a zero order hold. So, we will get this complete model to be a zero order hold equivalent model and that can be expressed in terms of uh, Z A S 1 minus S Z S by S. So, this is the continuous version of this, but if you want to get the Z inverse because we want to get the discrete time equivalent model equivalent model and this will be here that means it is the 1 minus z inverse z then it is z transform of g of s by s and what is g of s it is you know the combined block which consisting of all continuous time transfer function. Now, how can we extend this approach to switch mode power converter 
So, if you again consider the block consisting of mixed domain element, so we want to use this approach where we want to get the from this part to this part we want to get g z a z and what will be this? This will be g of s in this form if you want to get g of s will be product of g p w f s g b d s and this delay and this if we can consider and we may consider an approximate version of this delay may be first order pad approximation because if this delay if this tau d equal to complete sampling time then you know it, it is straight forward. So, that delay can be accommodated here by z inverse, but since this delay may be it is greater than 0, but less than this sampling time then we may approximate this delay may be a first order approx pad approximation or something like that then you can get the total equivalent uh, model. So, in summary, but one thing uh, at the end because we want to compare this model in the you know maybe the later part of this week that what will happen if we consider continuous time model only that means all blocks are taken into the continuous domain and adding that delay e to the power minus std. Then we will have everything in the continuous domain and you can design the controller in continuous domain which is standard and then you can get back once you design the controller then you can get back in the z domain by means of you know like a transformation like that means s to z transformation and that we will be discussing in the subsequent lecture. And we want to first see if we use the continuous time approximate model with a delay what is the accuracy of the transfer function with respect to what we learn we will learn about accurate discrete time model. So, if you compare the transfer function using accurate discrete time model or if we compare with continuous time discrete time, continuous time model with delay and maybe we can also consider the and alternative approach the zero order hold equivalent of this transfer function. So, combining all these what I mean what are the accuracy and which one should be selected for the design purpose. So, this modeling approach gives us some kind of information and when we will compare one with other then it will help us to select because this transfer function in continuous to time uh, you know uh, the small signal models are much easier to deal with because we know output impedance control to output transfer function all these pole 0 we know very easily. And we will see when you go to z domain in pure discrete time model accurate discrete time model it will be accurate, but it will not be so intuitive in terms of pole 0 location. So, we need to compare the accuracy as well as we need to find a mechanism of design in such a way it will also give some insight in terms of impedance uh, you know or other parameters loop transfer function pole zeros expression and so on. So, in summary we have recapitulated the continuous time small signal modeling then of you know of the AC equivalent circuit model then we have discussed the sample data modeling perspective for this digitally controlled converter and finally, we have also discussed the continuous time small signal modeling under digital control and we will be discussing the accuracy of this method with respect to the other method in the subsequent lecture. That is it for today. Thank you very much.